There is no art which one government sooner learns of another than that of draining money from the pockets of the people. Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations. Hello and welcome back. Chapter 16 opens with Don Quixote's inner thoughts. He is so satisfied and proud of his victory over the Knight of the Mirrors that he forgets all his previous beatings. Also, now he has a singular mission. He must free Dulcinea from sorcery. He said to himself that if he could find an art, means, or manner by which to disenchant his lady Dulcinea, he would not envy the greatest fortune that had been attained or could ever be attained by the most fortunate knight errant of times past. Sancho interrupts Don Quixote's inner musings by recalling the nostrils of his neighbor. Isn't it strange, sir, that I still have before my eyes the oversized and boundless nostrils of my compadre Tomé Tetial? Can you see the irony here? As our heroes debate the identities of the Knight of the Mirrors and his squire Sancho notes the depth of his relation with Tetial. Their houses share a wall over which Tetial's face often appears. That face without the nostrils was the same as Tomé Tetial's, just as I have seen it many times in my village and over the wall between our houses. Tetial's ethnicity is suspect. His huge nose signifies Jewish lineage, a detail used by old Christians to deride rival conversos, as in Francisco Quevedo's anti-Semitic sonnet, There Once Was a Man Attached to a Nose. And thanks to Sancho, Tetial's two faces, nosed and unnosed, have now intruded on Don Quixote's thoughts about Dulcinea. Don Quixote cannot accept that the Knight of the Mirrors is Carrasco, his friend. Have I been his enemy by chance? Have I ever given him reason to be angry with me? Am I his rival? He produces a familiar explanation. Sorcery is to blame. All is artifice and illusion. Moreover, his enemies used this trick because they knew he could not possibly kill his neighbor so that the friendship that I have for him would restrain the edges of my sword and the severity of my arm and temper the just anger of my heart. Don Quixote voices a Christian ethic here. By contrast, he also claims victory over his enemy. I am the conqueror of my enemy. Did you know Cervantes, like many of his contemporaries, such as King Philip II, was excommunicated by the Catholic Church. With the victory over the Knight of the Mirrors behind them, our heroes now meet another character, the hotly debated Knight of the Green Coat. He is a radically different kind of knight, a modern knight. To be precise, he is a gentleman whom the narrator describes as prudent and discreet. Note that the dominant color of his trappings is green with royal touches of gold and purple. Note also that he has important adornments that have explicitly Arabic roots, especially a scimitar, a Moorish scimitar hanging from a wide sword belt of green and gold. Critics take this knight as an Erasmian figure, a kind of reasonable humanistic alter ego to Don Quixote but his Moorish scimitar indicates the same ethnic conflict we have seen elsewhere. Calm pervades this scene. The gentleman is polite. He greeted them politely. When he passes our heroes, Don Quixote invites him to join them, and the man agrees, excusing his rudeness by saying that he was worried that his mare might provoke Rocinante. We know from part one, that this is a very real possibility. Nevertheless, Sancho defends the horse's reputation. Our horse is the most chaste and well-behaved on earth. On similar occasions, he has never done anything base. And the one time that Rocinante did misbehave, Don Quixote and Sancho paid the price. My lord and I paid it sevenfold. Sancho here alludes to an ancient fine of seven times the cost of damages caused by the guilty party. The figure of the Knight of the Green Coat alludes to what ethnic group? A. Canaanites B. Jews C. Moriscos Correct answer, C. Moriscos The narrator further underscores the scene's bourgeois tranquility by noting that Don Quixote is not wearing his helmet, riding without his salat helmet, which Sancho carried hanging like a valise over the forebow of his gray's saddle. 
The fellow traveler stares at Don Quixote in amazement, and so Don Quixote introduces himself as a medieval knight motivated by adventure and love. He quotes from a Spanish translation of Petrarch's triumph of love. I am a knight, like the ones who the people say sally forth on their adventures. He provides further details, admitting that he has pawned his property, I mortgaged my estate, and bragging that, thanks to a certain book, he is now famous worldwide. I have earned the right to be published in nearly all or most of the world's nations. 30,000 volumes of my history have been printed, and there are plans to print 30,000 times a thousand more, if heaven does not intervene. Don Quixote exaggerates the number of books about him that circulated at that time, claiming 20 editions although he is certainly accurate about the future number of volumes. That's all for now. We invite you to tune in to our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.